All right, our first speaker today is the Honorable Joyce Murray. She is Canada's Minister of Digital Government, and she's been busy hosting the Digital Nations, which is a group of 10 countries that share digital government best practices all week. And since it's been a big year for crises and for transformation, we've asked her to share some of her lessons learned, both from here in Canada and around the world, from the pandemic response. Minister Murray, welcome to 450. Thank you, Alistair, and it's a great pleasure to be here. I'm joining you from the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. And um, congratulations on this gathering of uh, committed and uh, technically savvy people, Alistair. Um, and to you and Rebecca and the entire Forward 50 team, thanks for inviting me to speak and welcoming delegates from the Digital Nations Ministerial Summit, which we just wrapped up. Je tiens à remercier Alistair et Rebecca, ainsi que toute l'équipe de FWD50 de m'avoir invité à prendre la parole et d'avoir accueilli les délégués du sommet ministériel des nations numériques que nous venons de clôturer. So Forward 50 is the Canadian conference to explore how technology can make people's lives better. And uh, hearing Alistair just now talk about uh, the shifts and the way forward uh, tells me why your, your, converse, your conversations are so popular. So it's about building better digital governments in Canada and around the world. Now, having just wrapped up the Digital Ministers and Ministerial Summit, I can tell you these opportunities to share best practices and lessons are incredibly useful. And this year, among the ongoing challenges of the pandemic, these conversations are even more urgent and tangible. So thank you, Forward 50. Uh, I'm going to speak today about how we've responded to the COVID-19 pandemic and my vision for our government's digital transformation uh, to, as, uh, as Alex Sturgis said, a tech company, a modern tech company. Aujourd'hui, je veux parler de ma vision de la transformation numérique du Canada, de la façon dont nous avons réagi à la pandémie de COVID-19 et de mon plan pour faire bouger les choses en ces temps difficiles. Lessons along my personal life path to leading a digital transformation in a global pandemic do guide my vision for a digital transformation. I put myself through my languages, archaeology, and pre-med studies by planting 500,000 trees in British Columbia. But I also planted myself on a different career path than I had planned and then spent 25 years co-developing Canada's leading international reforestation business. You, your colleagues, or your kids may have worked for Brinkman and Associates Reforestation, which planted its one and a half billionth tree this spring. Why do I talk about this? Because planting as we do it in Canada is the hardest physical work ever measured by kinesiologists. We plant on all of our post logging or fire terrains in all weather, during our buggiest seasons in remote wilderness locations on steep mountainsides. It definitely teaches you in endurance and perseverance which are useful skills when facing digital obstacles. So my experience and my MBA climate policy thesis in the 90s made me a champion of ecological health issues at every stage of my political career. First elected in 2001 as a BCMLA, I was appoint appointed as Minister of Water, Land and Air Protection and had the privilege of laying the foundation for BC's leading climate and carbon pricing program of, the, of that decade. Later as Minister of Management Services, I oversaw the BC government's procurement transformation and consolidations of government services such as ICT. And that's a mandate that, prob mandate that probably sounds a little familiar to folks here today. In Ottawa, as Parliamentary Secretary to Treasury Board President, I led the development of what became Canada's Centre for Greening Government and later became its Minister. In representing Canada at the 2018 meetings of the Digital Nations in Auckland, New Zealand, I first experienced the power of these gatherings to inspire our government's digital transformation efforts. 
And now as Canada's first standalone Minister of Digital Government, I lead the Government of Canada's Digital Transformation, working with the teams at the Office of the Chief Information Officer, the Canadian Digital Service, and Shared Services Canada. And I think those dinosaurs, uh, we, we're already addressing that, Alistair. <laughs> My goal for this transformation is that every Canadian will be able to access any service at any time from any device. Lorsque nous aurons réussi, chaque Canadien pourra accéder à n'importe quel service à tout moment à partir de n'importe quel appareil. So COVID-19 response, uh, it's been incredible the way Canadians came together to respond to, to the COVID-19 pandemic, also, which also upended every industry and aspect of our economy. Au Canada, toutes les industries et tous les aspects de notre économie ont été bouleversés par la pandémie de COVID-19. And people's needs, not only in government, business, schools and families, drove our digital transformations, just as it must have driven yours. In response to this pandemic, our government acted in record time to roll out supports to sustain people throughout the crisis. Now, this was undertaken by a workforce which in a matter of a few short days had to pivot to remote work. This was a Herculean effort, one that would have normally taken months, and it was done in a matter of days and weeks. C'était un effort herculéen qui aurait normalement pris des mois et il a, il a été fait en quelques semaines. Shared Services Canada quickly expanded our network capacity and rolled out collaborative tools like Microsoft Teams to help public servants work together effectively from home. And the digital government's back-end support enabled public servants to quickly roll out services, services to millions of Canadians, like the emergency response benefit the Canadian Emergency Wage Subsidy and many, many others. As well, we built tools to help Canadians stay informed about COVID-19 and the government supports that were available. Canada's new notification service called Get Updates on COVID-19 was built using open source code from the UK Digital Service and now has sent over 5 million important messages to Canadians by text or April, just since April. Because this tool is also easily scalable, it's been adopted by different orders of government across Canada. This summer, we also launched COVID Alert. Cet été, nous avons également lancé l'application Alert COVID. This is an exposure notification app. I just learned that Portugal is using the same fundamental uh, source code. Uh, this is an app that lets Canadians know they may have been exposed to the virus and does it without sharing any personal information. So like digital increasingly is today, this was a very collaborative effort. It was built using Apple and Google's Exposure Notification Framework API. We worked alongside Canadian-based companies like BlackBerry and volunteers from Shopify to develop a bilingual app that could be scaled across the country. And it was built in coordination with nonprofit Linux Foundation's Public Health 2, who developed the code, and BlackBerry employees who provided additional security reviews. Other ministries, of course, like health, were, it were critical. So countries, as I mentioned, Portugal, but also Ireland, Netherlands, Uru Uruguay, the UK, Germany, Japan, uh, and I, I'm sure a number more developed similar apps using the Apple and Google framework. So people around the world are cooperating out of compassion to meet this crisis. And like them, the digital world is increasingly collaborating to rise to its transformational and humanitarian challenges. Over 5 million Canadians, and so far eight provinces are using the COVID Alert app to help keep their communities safer. Plus de 5 millions de Canadiens et à ce jour, 8 provinces utilisent l'application Alert COVID. So, of course, I can't lose the opportunity to encourage everyone who can to download it today and help limit the spread of COVID-19. Et j'encourage tous ceux qui le peuvent à la télécharger dès aujourd'hui. 
Now, Canada's digital successes have given us confidence in our capacity to react decisively and effectively. And I am focused on seizing this momentum. We need to deliver better, faster, and more reliable services, clearly. The pandemic helped break down the bureaucratic structures and silos that typically slow us down. And the urgent need to put people first is driving our cultural shift to more responsive, agile, and adaptive public services across all de departments. Le moment est venu de promouvoir le changement de culture en faveur de services publics plus réactifs, plus agiles et plus adaptables qui donnent la priorité aux personnes. And that's a very important idea. This is about people. This is a social program in a way, the digital government program. In order to keep the momentum going, we need to work together clearly. C'est pourquoi les événements comme FWD 50 sont si importants. These formal and informal national and international net networks of people who are expert and motivated are collectively finding digital services solutions and services for our challenges. So I, I want to talk just a bit about the seventh annual Digital Nation Summit, which is a collaborative forum of 10 of the world's leading digital governments. Nation Numérique est un forum de collaboration entre 10 des principaux gouvernements numériques du monde. The summit's theme was responsive and resilient service. La thème du sommet était un service réactif et résilient. And through candid discussions on issues like digital inclusion, addressing the environmental impact of our IT operations, and recruiting and retaining digital talent, the, the summit provided the opportunity to learn and develop shared solutions to common problems, a chance to borrow best practices from some of the world's leading digital governments. What a privilege. And above all, it was a chance to learn about the work other countries are pushing forward on. For example, Denmark revamped their legislation to enable data sharing across departments to be more effective for citizens. Mexico and Estonia are doing some amazing work on data interoperability through their signature Interopa MX and XROADS platforms. And Israel's Campus IL, an open learning platform that provides free courses from leading academic and international institutions professional training, public sector diploma courses. This is something that we could use here. And we're also applying lessons from Portugal and New Zealand who are world leaders in digital ID and from Korea uh, who have a cutting edge digital government strategy. So here in Canada, we're interested in using projects like this to help us devise better data sharing solutions across our government and other jurisdictions. For example, Canada's policy on automated decision-making was developed using ethical principles of artificial intelligence agreed upon first by the digital nations. And I'm pleased to see how other member countries are embracing it. So, ce sont là des exemples concrets de collaboration internationale et votre participation et vos contributions nous aideront à faire avancer les choses. Now, while 2020 will begin to bend the curve on greenhouse gas emissions and shrink our footprint on the living ecosystems on which we depend, digital nations, digital footprint is growing. So the matter of greening IT is now an emerging critical area of work for the digital nations. And personally, as former chair of the Council, the Council of Canadian Ministers of the Environment, Advancing collective climate action is an ongoing personal passion for me. The world has a health crisis. We currently have an econo economic crisis. But when those are behind us, we will still have the climate crisis. Improving digital service delivery is about being better, faster, and more people-focused. And it's also about taking a responsible and holistic approach. So virtual and online services offer the opportunity to reduce human society's environmental footprint. And we need to make sure that our progress in improving digital service delivery also helps reduce the government's environmental footprint. Nous devons donc nous assurer 
que nos progrès dans l'amélioration de la prestation de services numériques contribuent également à réduire l'empreinte écologique du gouvernement. So there are data, data tracking opportunities to better leverage data and IE and AI to inform greening government IT decisions. Canada is leading the Digital Nations Working Group on Greening IT to make environmental sustainability a cornerstone of our digital recovery efforts. This group of 10 governments around the world will align to implement measurable, sustainable, and greener IT procurement practices. Uh, this commitment includes holding our suppliers accountable for their climate footprint and actively promoting built-in environmental stewardship. Now, Canada's greening government strategy includes a greater focus on IT investments, energy efficient cloud services to help reduce government operations emissions by 40% by 2030, and to get to net zero, of course, by 2050. So that's just a snapshot of the momentum of the digital nations, which I'm pleased to add to the ideas being shared here at Forward 50. So the events of the past year have brought stress and hardship to people around the world, but they've also accelerated government's efforts to improve service delivery. So let's harness this momentum of this digital shift, digital shift and position governments around the globe to deliver better, faster, greener, and more reliable services to their citizens in an increasingly complex and uncertain future. In Canada, our aim is that every Canadian will be able to access any federal government service at any time from any device. And my key areas of focus are modernizing the way we replace, build, and manage ma major IT projects. One, supporting departments in meeting their digital operational needs. Two, building whole of government platforms and components that make it easy for Canadians to find and use government services and trust them. That's three. And finally, overhauling the institutional barriers to change that have held us back. So fo while focusing uh, on the principles of equality, inclusion, and trust that are so critical to a healthy democracy. So what will this ultimately mean for Canadians? If Canadians can self-serve from any device, and we can then provide better one-on-one -on -one service for those who need the help. And that, uh, that makes this a social program as well. Qu'est-ce que cela signifie en fin de compte pour les Canadiens? Des services sûrs, fiables et faciles à utiliser depuis n'importe quel appareil. So I have a question. How would you like your transaction with the government to be? My vision includes no more paper forms and faxes, no more confusing and hard to find government benefits and services, no more having to call and sit on hold to get an update on your transaction, no more complicated logins with credentials that are easy to forget. And for the majority of Canadians, no more having to file your taxes yourself. International collaboration will be the norm, not the exception. So this transformation, no small task, requires finding and fostering the right people for the job, people like you at Forward 50. Surtout, il faudra trouver et encourager les bonnes personnes pour ce travail, des personnes comme vous. So I challenge those of you here today who are in the private sector to consider working for your government. Je mets donc un défi aujourd'hui, ceux parmi vous qui font partie du secteur privé, d'envisager de se mettre au service de leur gouvernement. Your expertise and forward thinking will be so valuable as we build the multidisciplinary teams to deliver better services to citizens. So this is my message to Canadian private sector digital experts. Consider working for us, the Government of Canada, your governmental tech company. <laughs> we have an exchange program to bring you in and harness your perspectives. There's a lot of work ahead. You'll have a lot of challenges, but if an, a tree planting environmentalist like me can learn to lead the government of Canada's digital transformation, then there's nothing you can't accomplish. So I encourage all of us, 
this Forward 50 community to seize this momentum. Thank you. Merci. Thank you so much, Minister Murray. I love that you came on here to do a recruiting pitch. So uh, as I said, government's big tech, it's just not the same as the private sector big tech. And uh, this is a great time to be, if you always wanted to work in big tech, well, now you can, right? <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here today, and thank you so much for hosting the world. It's been great to see Canada uh, welcoming countries from around the globe who cooperate on uh, digital government and, and coordination of all this kind of stuff. It's a huge undertaking to do any year, let alone in a year like this. So I'm thrilled that it was able to go off so smoothly. It was super exciting, and I learned a lot. Awesome. Well, it's been great to see you. And uh, yeah. those of you who are watching, we do also have a YouTube channel. Um, and on the Forward 50 YouTube channel, we have a series called Forward Thinking. Uh, I had a fascinating conversation with Minister Murray uh, and some of the other digital leaders from provinces and territories as far north as uh, the Yukon, all the way over in Newfoundland and BC. So we covered C to C to C. Uh, if you want to see more of this kind of content or hear more from the minister, you can check out uh, the videos that are on the Forward 50 YouTube channel. <laughs>